listening to Rob Reiner. Yeah. Hey, nice, Stephanie. Look, see the see the poster back there. Yes. That, that's, that's it. That's, that's the American president. There. Yeah. I, have I mentioned to you that I like that movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> I only speak in Rob Reiner movie ease. Almost everything <laughs> I say. <laughs> Liar! <laughs> did you order the code red? Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, damn right, I did. Don <laughs> Donald Trump ordered every code red. Isn't that what we're, we're, we're finding? I, like many people, want to know what you wanted to say on Bill Maher's show. So let's t let's talk about you, because you have a lot to say about Merrick Garland and what is happening. You've been all over Twitter. The sooner Trump's indicted and found guilty of his mountain of crimes, the sooner our voting rights are restored, the sooner we will have restored our democracy. So give us your take on Merrick Garland, because you've been very tough on Twitter. You said Merrick Garland's dealing with a landfill-sized garbage heap of corruption left behind by a criminal president. He won't succeed in cleaning it up unless he prosecutes the criminal who sat at the top of that heap. Thank right. you. Go, and, Rob. And Go, Rob Reiner. My thing is, is uh, you know, the, the democracy is is under attack right now. I mean, literally, physically, was under attack on January sixth, and it's fragile. Democracy is fragile, and we're not guaranteed to have it. You know, we've had it for two hundred forty-five years, but it's not guaranteed forever. And the two pillars of democracy, to me, are the right to vote that every citizen has the right to vote and that the vote counts and it's not gonna be stolen from them. And we're seeing all kinds of voter suppression and laws put in place in the state level to do just that. So that's one thing, that's one area that has to be fought and we need to get the Voting Rights Act, the John Lewis Act, the uh, For the People Act, those things have to pass. If not, we're taking away the bedrock foundation of democracy. The second thing, is the rule of law. And that's where Merrick Garland comes in. Donald Trump was impeached twice, but that's a political uh, uh, endeavor. And there's no basis for law there. It's just that the Congress has a right to do that. And they did it, but they didn't convict him. But if he has broken actual federal laws, unless the attorney general holds him accountable for breaking those laws, we have lost the rule of law. And if we lose that and we lose our right to vote, then that's pretty much the slippery slope where you end uh, up in autocracy. So that's my fear. My fear is that Merrick Garland, so far, I'm not seeing that he is doing that. I mean, there have been a little tips of the iceberg, but not going after uh, the E. Jean Carroll uh, uh, case, to me, dropping that case and, and siding with the Trump Justice Department that Trump was, you know, doing his presidential duties by defaming E. Jean Carroll. That didn't make sense to me. And I got me very nervous that he wouldn't go after Trump for obstruction of justice, which he committed a minimum of five times, according to the Mueller report, which was also corroborated by Don McGahn just recently this week. So we have obstruction of justice and we have a person, who, a president who led a violent, deadly insurrection to overthrow the U.S. government. If he's not prosecuted for those things, then the rule of law becomes meaningless. And yeah. when that happens, that there goes democracy. Yeah. Well, Rob, it seems like we're, you know, Merrick Garland, we're trying to, you know, maintain the, you know, institution of the Department of Justice or, you know, Joe Manchin doesn't want to blow up the tradition of the filibuster in the Senate. Mitch McConnell already blew up the filibuster. Donald Trump already blew up the, the Department of Justice. These are not normal times. Like, we can't use normal remedies, can we? Well, you, you can use normal remedies when it comes to the Justice Department. Yes, he blew up the Justice Department, and that is one job that Merrick Garland has, which is to refurbish it, to bring it back to where it needs to be. But it doesn't say that you can't prosecute federal crimes that were committed. And if he does that, that will put things back on norm. Now, right. as far as the filibuster is concerned, you know, this isn't over yet. I mean, Joe Manchin has a thing about the filibuster, which is not in the Constitution. It's just a Senate rule. It was used primarily to deny black people their rights during the Jim Crow era. But it can be carved out for certain things that are not necessarily budgetary or not necessarily you know, uh, uh, r related to things other than our basic rights, which is our right to vote. And so I'm not giving up on the fact that Joe Manchin might 
back off of that just for voting rights. But we'll see. Right. The, the, you know, right but now, uh, the president has his hands full with the with the infrastructure bill, and I believe that'll get passed. Uh, I don't know what form it'll get passed in, whether it's done through reconciliation or whether it's done through normal procedure, but a version of it will get passed, and then he'll he'll have to move on to voting rights, yeah. and that's going to be the big one. Yeah, and that's only everything. Well, you tweeted it. You said, until we wake the up, I potty mouth, Rob Reiner. <laughs> until we wake yeah. the you up, beat, I will. You, I, you, you, you beat yourself there, I noticed. I will be a broken record, kill the filibuster, pass voting right, or democracy dies, period. Um, yes, we are in a hostage crisis with our democracy. Um, and you just, I mean, you said it. If Merrick Garland is unwilling to prosecute Donald Trump for obstruction of justice and citing a deadly attack to overthrow the government and countless other crimes, the rule of law is meaningless. Mm -hmm. Democracy is a sham. And we've not only created a precedent, Rob, but a training exercise for, the, for someone, yeah. a smarter autocrat than Donald Trump, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you, these midterms, which, you know, normally uh, the party in power loses seats in the midterms, that could happen here. Uh, but the midterms are more important than they've ever been, because if we do lose the Senate, if we do lose the House and the uh, state, sen the state legislatures are allowed to continue putting in these voter uh, laws, the suppression part is terrible, but the worst part of it is putting in provisions to allow state Senate, state uh, legislatures to overturn elections. And if that happens, then you do have the end of democracy. Can you imagine if you had uh, a president like Joe Biden who won by seven, eight million votes, but lost because they were able to flip three or four states yeah. based on the fact that they wouldn't certify uh, the vote and allow the electors to go and 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 uh, and cast their votes in Washington. That that would be the end of democracy. I hate to interrupt you, Rob Reiner, but my pillow guy yeah. <laughs> says that uh, Trump won by 19 million votes, including the state of California. So maybe your numbers are are off. Yeah, they could be off. They could be off. <laughs> You say what goes to your tweet? You said having a lunatic criminal in the White House for four years has infected a big swath of the population with a lunacy. If we don't inoculate ourselves with voting rights, it will become a pandemic called fascism. I mean, yeah. it, it is that, that's all I need. It's not even red, you know, red or blue Democrat or Republican anymore. It is just they are completely divorced from reality and any set of yes. facts. And that shows you the effectiveness of a good disinformation campaign. Mm -hmm helped by Vladimir Putin, who Joe Biden is going to be meeting with tomorrow. But everybody knows that if you put out bad information and you keep repeating it over and over and over, and it's coming from the highest, in the case of Russia, it comes from Vladimir Putin. In the case of the United States, for four years, it came from Donald Trump. You can see the effectiveness of a disinformation campaign, which is more powerful now than it's ever been because because of the internet, which is the atomic bomb of, uh, of, of disinformation. So you've got those people that are hardcore stuck in a world of disinformation. And it's, it's and like a cult. We've said it many, many times before. It's very hard to get people out of that.